My name's Dave Pearson, and I'm one of the founders of a group called Fight Club. Jean-Francois is a member of our group, and Jean and I have known each other since 2012. Um, Reunion Island has had some horrific attacks, which unfortunately I know of and have been involved in the families, and it hasn't been a happy time over in um, Reunion Island. Uh, maybe you can get closer, it will be easier, because my English is not perfect. Uh, I hope uh, you can understand what I have to, to explain. My name is Jean-François Nativel. I'm a PE teacher, national volleyball champion, a waterman for 35 years as a swimmer, a surfer and a spear fisherman. In 2011, following a shark attack in the herd of our main sea resort, I joined a fishing expedition to find the bull shark responsive. This caused a lot of controversy which led me to my struggle for shark mitigation. Then followed seven years of fight in which I personally became involved. My objective was to maintain access to the sea in Rainian Island. I'm not a marine biologist, but through my relentless study, many people consider me as a specialist. This is the tragic story of my book. For five years, it has been illegal to go into the ocean on Rainian Island. Rainian Shark Island. It is a small island lost in the Indian Ocean. It has been a French territory since 1946, where aquatics activity have been developed over the last 40 years. But before I talk about the special case in Rainian, I'm going to present a comparison between five shark attack hotspots throughout the world in regions with similar shark species and climate. It's important to understand before commenting. We will successively see the situation in Australia, Brazil, Hawaii, South Africa, and Rainian Island. We start with Australia. I'm not Australian, but I'm very interested in your situation, and I will suggest my external analysis and perspective. You are a country with a big water sports culture. The ocean has been part of your life for more than a century, as seen on this photo of the 30s. Queensland, the water sport culture is very strong in this region, and the mitigation policy is strongly reflected by the way its beaches are protected, with 84 beaches protected by drum lines and nets. An example of the drum line positioning, just behind the surfers. In Rainian Island, there is a big controversy around the fact that the drumline bait attracts shark close to the coast. These photos show that 50 years of experiences of shark mitigation through the use of drumlines prove that it's false. Looking at the capture figure, we see that the number has been unaffected year after year. 100 bull shark and around 200 tiger shark show that these shark species look resistant to fishing effort. These shark prevention measures are success as indicated by the Australian Environmental Authority in 2017. There have been no shark fatalities in the area where the program has been operating since 1962. Australia, New South Wales, 3.9 million swimmers, 51 protected beaches by lethal gill net catch and kill sharks since 1937, but more shark attacks on non-protected beaches like Balina. Balina. In Balina, net's trial ended due to excessive bycatch. They keep only smart drum line for tagging. Is there a link between marine area policies? shark conservation and sharks attack. Glenn has prepared a graph that reveals that in Australia a correlation exists between shark conservation measures and a rise in attacks. He also prepared a map that shows a concentration of attack in the marine reserve of New South Wales. 
a political crisis. Is innovation the solution? Like in Rayan, with the lobbying of the green and the ecological conscience, the authority prefer to develop non-lethal methods that are the effective. Most of them seem to not work. Example of non gilnet or sonar. The non-lethal barrier systems are not working in Australia nor in Rayan. The sonar systems are still not operational. In Western Australia, following a series of unprecedented deadly attacks, Colin Barnett's government supported the deployment of drumline to protect beaches in 2014. The New Age approach suggests a dreamy, peaceful cohabitation between prey and predator. This was to cause doubt about the program's policy after a big protest. As everywhere else, the debate becomes a political issue with an electoral risk for those who courageously assume a mitigation policy. In September 2014, the Australian Environmental Authority rejects the mitigation program because of uncertainties about their impact on the great white shark population. A surprising and incomprehensible backflip, according to the shark prevention experts. Since then, new deadly attacks occurring. What future in Western Australia? In 2018, Margaret Pro River was cancelled after two shark attacks occurred nearby. Like Rainion Island, the experiment with non-lethal preventive measures such as the protective barrier turned into a fiasco. Like in Rainion, the swimmers are easier to protect than surfers. The politicians preferring to invest in swimming pools rather to confront the problem. The political strategy allows to save some time and make people believe that they are doing their best. The only thing that seems acceptable now in Western Australia is the smart drumline, as they are non-lethal. Like in Rainion Island, the fishermen reported a rise in the number of sharks, but this empirical data is not accepted by the biologists. Other theory in Australia wonder about aggravating factors around behavioral change, such as the cowbell effect or even the modification of the shark behavior made by cage diving. Like everywhere, conservationalist opposition seems to reflect an anti-humanist societal evolution. The human being considered as the enemy of the planet, they are not embarrassed to make martyr and sacrifice. Like in Rainian Island, some families say governments are more focused on protecting sharks than humans. But the only acceptable position in our modern society is that which say animal is superior to human, in particular the apex predator, while others remain in a notion of union, listening and helping the victim, survivors, family and rescuers, such as Dave Pearson, founder of the Bike Club. Brazil Brazil is a big country. Only the Pernambuco region is confronted with a disproportionate risk. The Recife area has experienced significant urbanization with a low wastewater treatment, resulting a high level of pollution. The study of the political management there is very interesting as one can measure the result of 25 years of scientific studies and also of prohibition in partnership with the French Research and Development Institute. It's the first community who call for a security against a major risk and denounce the calamitous mitigation management scandal with a very strong opposition and conflict against shark kill, including provocation and threat. There, three organizations have emerged to defend ocean user interests, but they are not really strongly developed. Please notice the following slides are confronting. The first attacks begin in 1990. Previously, this region was spared by this phenomenon. When I was there in 2014, the people I met were convinced that the cause is the increase of bull shark population, considered a scourge. 
maybe because of the growing pollution. The violence of the attacks is so horrible that they nicknamed the city El Cif. The pictures are self explained Access ban to the ocean was the only measure next to the capture and release of some specimen in the 2000s. But it was impossible to enforce in a city of several million people living in front of the sea in a tropical area. In July 2013, Bruna Gobi was killed in front of the camera. Impossible to claim it was a drowning, it happened to a tourist and her family demanded retribution. Usually, the victims are poor people and the official investigation concludes with a drowning where the body was beaten after death. After the last non-contest attack, the only measure debated is to increase penalty against Bath, as would has been the case for the last three victims who will not enter the official count of shark attack in 2015, 2017 and 2018, neither in Brazil nor anywhere else. As in Réunion Island, the defenders of access to the ocean there are trying to make things change to bring their fight onto the political field. As in Réunion, they also regularly organize shark testing because it's important to give meaning to fishing, not just kill, which isn't acceptable in modern opinion, but to propose an outlet for the byproducts. When I was in Recife, I made people aware of the big environmental problem with pollution. As a result, Mauro Melo, the president of the local surf league, decided to start organizing beach cleaning ups by surfers since 2014. The only explanation of the attacks revolve around a change in shark behavior due to the construction of the Suape port. The other designated cause of the attack is the current with according to the rescue service who drag the swimmers off into shark infested area. The only answers given consisted of environmental education in the form of a naive booklet where the shark would be a friend provided you have the number of the rescue organization this measure is associated with a formal ban on swimming and water activity outside the tiny supervised area, often behind a barrier of rocks or coral. The scientists have released the conclusion of 20 years of study in 2014, in which they welcome the great success of their green program since it won't have required the death of any shark. But can reducing the risk through a ban be morally considered as a glorious solution? South Africa. South Africa has similarity with Australia. Durban, where the prevention of attacks was implemented in the 1950s, and Cape Town, where prevention through fishing was not accepted. Following a rise of attacks in the 2000s, Cape Town declined fishing as a method of risk reduction, likewise in Western Australia, because there too, the offending species are protected great white sharks. They have the idea of developing the shark spotter system. It is a system specific to this region, made of large expanses of shallow ocean and white sand, allowing observers located on the surrounding mountain to sound a real-time alert to emergency station when a great white shark is spotted. After a series of attacks in the 50s, Durban followed the Australian example by deploying nets. A second series of attacks on unprotected beaches threatened the tourism industry and led to a genuine popular uprising. A second series of attacks on unprotected beaches threatened the tourism industry and led to a genuine popular uprising. This led to the establishment of the Natal Shark Board in 1964.
Since then, the Natal Shark Board has been protecting big shields and at the same time offering an educational program at the museum. 46 beaches are efficiently protected. The average number of shark caught is each year is about 500. Mitigation methods are facing growing opposition for sh from shark protectors who are trying to remove nets and drum lines. But it seems to be less, but it seems to be less influential in a country that is experiencing major economics and social difficulties. In this 2016 article, Jeremy Cliff, director of the Natal Shark Board, confirms the effectiveness of the nets. There has been no serious attack on Durban's protected beaches since 1952. Hawaii. In Hawaii, 99.3% of reserve area are located on totally uninhabited island. The shark attack problem is unique to Hawaii. There was a peak in 1991-1992 with three deaths of surfers, which led to small regulatory action by the state and the surfers themselves. The attacks are frequent, but often not fatal. The risk in Hawaii is acceptable and accepted, given the large number of people in the water and the very low number of fatalities, only 6 from 1980. Hawaii does not employ a shark mitigation policy. We can see that it is mainly tiger shark attacks in Hawaii and that there are very few fatalities. There are no bull sharks and very few white sharks in Hawaii. The tiger shark is considered the most dangerous species on the planet because of its large distribution around the world. But this data in Hawaii suggests that the species is more curious but at the same time is not as tenacious as the bull sharks. The question of a mitigation policy regularly returns to the public debate after each fatality in Hawaii. That was the case after the death of Jana in July 2013. Florida. Florida is the epicenter of shark attacks around the world, with an average of 25 attacks per year, with very few fatalities. Most attacks are not serious and they are content to just momentarily close the beach with information-based prevention measures. Many swimmers sharks but also recreational fishermen. It is a paradox to note that the no cure movement comes from USA, a country that kills a lot of sharks. It is a paradox to note that the no cure movement comes from the United States, a country that kills a lot of sharks. A country where dozens of fishing tournaments take place without fear. Here's a comparison between four locations with similar climate, Hawaii, Florida, Reunion, and Brazil. In this graph about the species involved in the attacks, one thinks that Hawaii is basically tiger shark, in Reunion and Brazil it's mostly bull shark, and in Florida a mix of species, including many small sharks. As a result of this analysis I did in 2013, the bull shark attacks are mostly responsive for the attacks in Reunion and Recife, where there, the fatality rate is much higher. The case in Hawaii shows that the tiger shark is far less aggressive than the bull shark. Shark attack statistics rare in the world. Fatal shark attacks remain an extremely rare phenomenon on the planet, but continue to receive growing media attention because this phenomenon fascinates public opinion in our modern societies where sharks and surfers have become new icons. Rare in the world but not in Reunion, rated number one. In relation to the number of population and people in the water, Reunion Island exceeds all records despite the ocean being closed since 2013. But we are confronted by statistics manipulation. Conservationists 
propaganda convinced people that if sharks are in danger, it's a result of their bad image they receive from the media. This results in a multitude of ways to belittle the risk, even from the most powerful people. Example of Bill Gates, who makes silly comparison from mosquito to ridiculize shark attacks. Yet, sharks are not fished around the world because of their bad image, but rather for their meat. 76 million sharks are fished each year for food and only around 2,000 for mitigation, Australia, South Africa and Reunion. What if accepting the death of few hundred sharks for mitigation could reduce attacks number, improve image of sharks and lead in return to protect millions of others? The case of Reunion Island Cause 1. A shark island? How can we explain our exceptional situation? Cause 1 1. A particular geology. Perfect habitat for shark interactions with humans? We are a young island with a rapidly descending coastal seabed compared to Mauritius Island. Sharks that live in depths of 60 to 100 meters are closer to humans in Rainier, which increase chance of encounter. The 100 meter deep line is very close to the shore compared to the older sister Mauritius Island. Cause 1.2 abundant rain in red world raining record in Rainier Island. We have several world records for rainfall with more than 700 ravines and rivers that flow to the ocean and it's a perfect habitat for bull sharks that love fresh water. Cause 2. Arrival development of the bull shark. Shark species in ancient time in Rainier. In this 1979 issue of Rainian Shark, the bull shark is almost non-existent. The aquatic activity are practices without problem. Bull shark was not well listed in 1979. The bull shark is poorly drawn and no interaction found by the journalists. There were a lot of fishermen in the past year. They never saw bull shark at that time in the seaside area. Since the marine reserve, this activity is prohibited in this place. In the past, in Reunion, we only found tiger shark or other species, but no bull sharks. This species is not listed in the Mascaren Island, but the UICN. In the 19th, the first identifications in Rainian. They began to cause attacks and to be identified from the late 1980s, before the attacks took place on spear fishermen from reef sharks. This situation reminds us of Recife, where the bull shark appeared and settled like a real plague. Previously, there was a fishing effort around the island. Here are the oldest photo of bull shark caught on Rainian Island. Cause 3. The end of the coastal shark fishery. Before there was regular fishing pressure, as was the case everywhere else around the island, with a lot of testimonials from regular fishermen and demonstrated by many stories and clipping. This document was produced by the Fishery Committee of Rainian Island and show a significant decrease in the number of sharks coach, Ciguatera carchatoxin, and of the shark fishing, 1999. The commercialization of coastal shark meat was banned from 1999 because of the risk of a toxin which exists in Madagascar, carchatoxin. Very little is known about this disease, but as a precaution, shark meat prohibition remains in force. It resulted in a stoppage of the fishery. Rainian remains the only place on the planet where this ban is in effect. Hypothesis of an increase in the population of coastal sharks. 
cold stopping fishing have led to a proliferation of coastal sharks, 13 puppets and 12 puppets in these two females. Is it the same for tiger sharks, 44 puppets in this one and 45 in this one? Traditional recreational fishermen catch many juvenile bull sharks every summer in the estuaries. Cause for the marine area. What is the impact of setting up a marine reserve in an ideal habitat for coastal sharks in a seaside area? For the scientifics, this is not a proof of the guilt of the marine reserve. A biographical document summary dating back to 2000 before the creation of marine area clearly indicates that a reserve modifies the behavior of predators. Many studies report a link between many studies report a link between marine reserve and rising shark occurrence. Last study in 2018 in Chagos Islands says the marine protected area is a valuable pantry and a refuge for young sharks. Environmental situation. Reunion remains to be one of the least polluted French territory. Turbidity due to every rains should not be confused with pollution. Compared to other region or tropical islands, we have a lesser polluted environment. Smart drumline. A broad mitigation policy has been put in place in response to the fight lead by the prevention association and one of these aspects is the use of smart drum lines which can target dangerous shark and keep bycatch alive in return a total ban of fishing for reef sharks was introduced in february 2015 the aim is to restore an unbalanced ecosystem due to an excessive bull shark presence securing by non-lethal barrier nets was attempted in 2016, but bull shark attacked twice inside the net and caused the end of this project. The ocean has been banned for more than five years and there are still hundreds of ocean users who continue despite the ban. Because we are a paradise for surfing and home to international champions. So it's finished, thank you for your listening.